Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to my channel. As you guys can tell from the title of today's video, I'm going to be talking about something that is not book related, but it is something that is very near and dear to my heart and that would be horror movies. I am kind of combining my two favorite things today, horror movies and booktube and just talking to you guys because I feel like these are movies that I think everyone should experience. These are movies that if you're looking for something kind of spooky or just straight up horror, um, to watch during the October season. These are really good picks. I'm gonna kind of be going over sort of what each movie's about. I do not want to spoil things though. I don't even really want to give you guys a whole synopsis on kind of what the movie's about, but I am going to do that obviously because what would I have to talk about then? But I am really looking forward to October. Honestly, I watch horror movies year round. It is something that is actually, strangely enough, kind of comforting to me, but I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys about all my favorite straight up horror movies that I think you guys need to watch this October season. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started and just chat with you guys about the ones that over the years I've absolutely fallen in love with. Some of these are very old. Some of these I actually watched for the first time when I was quite young and they have stuck with me ever since. So I think you guys would really, really enjoy them. So the first one I'm gonna talk about, I'm not gonna linger on for too long because by some chance that you haven't heard of this, what rock are you living under? But also I don't think this movie is necessarily for everyone, but it was incredibly popular in the 90s and that would be The Craft. The Craft actually follows a young woman who moves to a new town because her mother actually dies and she tries to commit suicide and it's like a big family thing. So they try to take her out of the situation that she is in. She goes to a completely new school, one of those schools where you, like a Catholic school where you have to wear the uniform or whatever. And she meets these girls and these girls are obviously able to do some sort of magic. There is like an aura around them and she's drawn to them and becomes friends with them. Now I'm going to leave the story at that, but I will say there's a lot more to the story than you may think. I think that this is definitely a movie that you could watch with a bunch of girlfriends. It's just a really good movie. It obviously has a lot about friendship, but it has a lot about betrayal and there's a ton of magic in it. You guys have heard like the stiff as a board, light as a feather thing. I think that really blew up in media because of this movie. Obviously that kind of thing has existed before now, but I think it became such a like thing that people did at parties or like sleepovers and stuff because of this movie. So this movie is definitely also one of those movies that if you are into witchcraft, you may find a little bit campy. You may find it a little bit stupid because it does unfortunately play a lot into the um, just media. It tries to make witchcraft look like this fantastical thing. So if you're really into witchcraft, you might not 100% like this movie, but I think it was really good, especially since I have loved it pretty much my entire life. Now the next one I'm going to talk about is not a horror movie per se, but it definitely does have murder in it. It is a little bit darker and that would be Practical Magic. Practical Magic is also just really cute. Practical Magic has Sandra Bullock and Nicole Kidman, I think is her name, in it and they are the Sanderson sisters, not Sanderson sisters, they are these two sisters, I cannot remember their last names right now, um, but they are raised to believe in magic and then there is a curse that is put on their family where essentially if, if one of the women, one of the women in the family falls in love, the man does eventually die and that does happen to Sandra Bullock's character so she swears off magic. Her sister goes a little bit crazy. I think the reason why I liked this book so, or this movie so much is because it kind of reminded me of me and my sister. I am clearly Sandra Bullock and my sister is clearly Nicole Kidman, rest her soul. Um, we were definitely like that. I think that's why I liked this movie so much, but there's a lot of just magic and good heartedness in this as well. But like I said, there is murder. It is pretty dark at times. So it's definitely one of those movies that you can watch in October. And if by chance, once again, you haven't seen this, you should definitely take the time to watch it. But also it is a book if you're interested in reading the book. Um, the next movie that I'm going to talk about, I'm going to briefly touch on because this movie definitely messed me up when I was younger and that would be Event Horizon. Essentially what Event Horizon follows is there is a scientist who works on a core of um, ships. Obviously this takes place in space. This is a space horror movie which happened to be some of my very favorites and he works on cores of ships and one of his ships actually goes missing and there's a salvage crew that gets a ping on the ship and they actually bring him aboard because obviously he knows how to handle his ship and they go searching for the ship and they do find it. And they find a lot more than they bargained for. This is a movie that if you don't like gore, you are not going to like, but it has one of my very favorite quotes from a movie ever in it. Um, actually one of my very favorite quotes ever, and it's about how fire moves through space. And it is just, 
such a wonderful, terrifying movie. But a lot of the characters in the movie obviously care about each other. It is heart heartwarming in that kind of way, but it's a very fucked up movie. So if you're not looking for something that's really gory and obviously horror related, you should skip this movie. But if you're looking for something like that and you do like space horror movies, I think you'll really like this one. Um, the next one that I wanna talk about is one of my other very favorites and that would be The Thing. And I'm not talking The Thing, the new one. I'm not talking that garbage movie. I'm talking about the original. Ah, I love this movie. Okay, so this movie follows a group who do delving essentially. They kind of bring, um, I forget what they're called, like ice samples. They're in the Antarctic. They pull ice samples and they actually uncover an alien. If you haven't seen this movie, this is an incredibly old movie, like a very, very old movie. It has one of my very favorite actors in it, but they find this substance, which is obviously you later figure out is an alien. But the reason why this movie is so good and so ridiculous. For one, the setting of it is phenomenal. They are on the Antarctic. They are away from everybody, away from civilization. They, um, the radios are cut off. They don't have any way to communicate with each other. And this alien actually assumes the form of people. And it actually, when it is first introduced to them, it assumes the form of a dog. And then it starts to assume the form of them. So they need to start testing each other and figuring out who is who. And if they're an alien, if they're a real person and they're their love for each other and their relationships are really tested and it is so good. It is such a great horror movie, but it's also a really, really good psychological movie and all of the actors in it are phenomenal. The, the, the like effects are now probably not considered the best, but at the time they were done really, really well. And I just love this movie. It's definitely one of those movies that I think really puts you in their shoes because when you're watching it, they are so cut off and it really makes you feel cut off and it's definitely, uh, it's like the perfect, perfect October horror movie. Now the next movie I have here is actually a Stephen King movie. I couldn't really include all of them because I think a lot of the Stephen King movies are pretty bad. Um, Shawshank Redemption is done really well, but obviously that's not really like a horror movie per se. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and just apologize now if the sunlight goes in and out. It was storming earlier, so the sun has been in and out, but I can't keep waiting for it. But the one Stephen King movie that always stuck with me is Creepshow. Creepshow I watched with my adoptive parents when I was pretty young because it's not super spooky, but it's definitely like kind of Tales from the Crypt-esque, but it's based on a story that Stephen King wrote or short stories that Stephen King wrote. So there is a multitude of short um, little movies in Creepshow as a whole. And my favorite would be Jordy Verrill. Jordy Verrill is actually played by Stephen King and it follows a man who an asteroid lands on his property and he kind of starts getting taken over by this moss and he's trying to get rid of this moss on his property and it's so good there's so many really good stories in this this is definitely a movie that you can just sit down and watch with pretty much anybody like i said it's not really terrifying per se but it does make you think there are a couple of stories within or little shorts within the movie that really are kind of messed up one is about a man whose wife actually cheats on him and how he retaliates against her and her lover another is about a man who finds a a, like a an ape-esque thing that he keeps under the stairs and he actually feeds people that he doesn't like to it. Another one has to do with bugs. There are just so many good stories within this. I actually just recently brought, bought the comic book version of this and I'm super pumped to read it, but this movie is just campy because it's very old, but also really nice if you're a fan of Stephen King, you really like this. Also, if you just want to see Stephen King once again in his movies, because back in the day, Stephen used to agree to do movies, have his movies, his books made into movies, but he kind of had the requirement that he needed to be in them. And it's really cool to see him in it as well. I think that it's done very, very well. The next one that I want to talk about is one that I saw not too long ago. This is more of a campy but also funny but also just worth the watch if you haven't seen it and that'd be the cabin in the woods the cabin in the woods i can't remember who did this movie but essentially it follows a group of kids who go to this cabin in the woods they're going to get into trouble one of them is like a complete stoner the other one is you're you're kind of led to believe and they sort of joke around that she's sort of a hoe like i'm not saying she's a hoe but that's kind of what you're expected to think of her. Like she does make out with, it's like an ongoing joke that she'll really sleep with anything. She makes out with a like, there's like a stuffed head in the thing. It's just like, she's over sexualized. It's very campy. There's another girl who's like the innocent like school girl. There's a couple of jocks that go with them. So it's kind of playing on the classic horror movie tropes as well, which I think is why I like it so much. Um, my favorite part of this movie is there are a couple of actors in this that I was blown away to see. I'm not gonna go into who because it's really great once she's finally revealed. But the reason why I like this is because there, this is one of those movies where 
every single horror trope that you can think of is shoved into this. Like I said, it's supposed to be kind of campy, sort of funny, but it is still a horror movie. And I died when I saw this. It was absolutely hilarious. I've seen it so many times since then. It is not what I was expecting it to be. And I don't want to kind of give you the reason why, because it's like the big plot twist at the end, but it's so good. You guys, if you watch anything out of this entire list, please, please, please go watch The Cabin in the Woods. Now the next one we're going to talk about, I'm going to talk about a movie series as a whole, kind of excluding the first ones, but that'd be Evil Dead or anything with Ash in it, including the most original, the most original, the most recent remake of the original, because the original was not supposed to be funny, but ended up actually kind of being funny. So moving on from that, they actually ended up making the subsequent um, movies a little bit more on the funny side. I love the main character of this movie. I absolutely adore him. I've actually met him before. He's just a really phenomenal guy. He's also super down to earth no matter how popular he is. If you've ever meet, met him at like Comic-Con and stuff, because he always goes. His name is Bruce Campbell. He is a, an amazing human. And now as an adult watching these movies, I have such an appreciation for them as well. I think that they're just really, really good, but they are essentially about a group of kids who go to this cabin and they awake something by playing a an old um like record essentially an old like recording and it awakens something in the earth and it actually comes to kill them now obviously that takes place along three movies four if you consider the most recent one even more than that if you have ever seen the show that they have coming out right now but it's so good it's definitely one of those dark kind of atmospheric movies in the first one and the other two are once again more campy horror kind of funny stuff but I love I have a shirt that has Bruce Campbell on it says this is my boomstick and I you guys I just I love those movies so much if you haven't seen them you need to watch them all right and the last movies that I have here are actually an entire series these are made I think even better for me because I have such a love for Sigourney Weaver I love I you guys don't even understand I love Sigourney I think that she is a phenomenal human I think she's an amazing actress I think she blends the line between masculine and feminine in these movies as well I think she was definitely a pioneer for female actors and I love these movies and obviously if you can't tell I'm talking about the Alien franchise you guys have not seen them because I have not shown you but I actually collect Alien merchandise I have a lot of the statues I have a lot of the collectible cards I have there's a ton of stuff from Alien my very favorite thing is um, it usually sits on my desk but it's a framed picture of Sigourney Weaver actually hugging an alien this series is so good because once again as with most of the movies that I really love it does take place in space and the main character is obviously um, kind of left alone to figure out what the hell she's gonna do my very favorite part of these movies has to do with a cat if you can believe it the first one is more so atmospheric kind of hidden monster sort of thing the later ones though especially like alien versus predator that kind of stuff i think it's done in a different way but especially the one i want to talk about today is the first one the first one is one of those psychological horror movies you obviously do see the alien you obviously know that they're um free and they're trying to kill people but it's done in more of a you have to kind of visualize it and you have to kind of think about it and kind of make the horror happen and i love those movies this is definitely a pioneer movie for the horror industry as well i think i think it was just done so good and i don't know if you guys can tell how passionate i am about it but the alien franchise is phenomenal it's one of those movies where i think it, like I said, it was kind of like a pioneer for the genre and it's just, you guys have to see it. I don't know anybody who hasn't, but if you have it, you need to make time for it and you need to watch it because the Alien franchise as well as Sigourney Weaver are just phenomenal. All right guys, so that's gonna be it for all of my favorite horror movies, all the horror movies I think you guys need to watch this October or ones that involve magic or spoop or you know, whatever. I just think that you guys should watch these they are so good every single one of them a lot of them i really like because they are more psychological like i said you have to kind of figure out the horror for yourself some of them are very in your face and a few of them are both funny and kind of creepy so i tried to cover a, a few different genres for people here because i know some people don't like gore i know some people who love gore i know some people who want more of a thriller-esque kind of movie something a little bit more campy something a little bit more old school so i tried to kind of cover a lot of different things here as well as different settings but i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did, please give it a thumbs up and think about subscribing. Also, leave down below your favorite horror movie, especially one if I haven't talked about it here. Maybe I haven't seen it and I will try to pick it up and watch it this year. But yeah, I hope you guys are having a good day and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!